Pat, why don't you lay it out, our next business venture for Ted, see if he can help us out. I'm bringing this one home, Ted, down and dirty. Ready? All right. Uh, I'm ready. Brenda and I want to buy a house in the city. We're going to go to City Living Sundays. I'm going to be signing autographs, and then I'm, we're going to stroll around and buy a house, right? That's the only thing that's not free at City Living Sundays. Pat charges for his autographs, folks. So. Yeah, and I'm not cheap either, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we buy a second home, city home. We're going to rent it out. Rent it is a second home, okay? So we're not going to live there yet. And uh, Brenna and I wanted to know, do we get an $8,000 first-time homebuyer credit or a $6,500 whatever second time? Or a $6,000 down payment grant or all or, of the above. Or $30,000 for our pockets for spending cash after we close. You would you would get the bookkiss. <laughs> <What? laughs> Explain why, please, because I'm the, just a normal bookkiss is just a, a slang, if you will. <laughs> uh, for you'll get absolutely nothing out of that. Oh, Other than a lot of great information. You know, the information okay. is invaluable. So. All right, what, so tell us that. why. What what's wrong with well, us? Why can't we why can't we make an investment in the city, use our tax credit and get some grants and, and you know, we are gonna be putting our hard earned cash into the economy. We don't understand why we're excluded. Yeah. Well, as you put it right to begin with, it's a first time home buyer. Okay. And a rental property is not a home for you. What if we lied on the paperwork? Then you would be <laughs> defrauding the federal government. Prosecuted and in a court of federal law. Else. <laughs> okay, I'm not touching that. <laughs> okay, good enough. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you want to buy a home for yourself, and indeed it's your first home, and, and a, be a little bit careful of the term first time home buyer. Of course, it means just that. It also means somebody that has not owned a home in New York State in the last three years. So you could own your home in Pennsylvania. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Or it also it goes a little farther, and a first-time home buyer is also what is uh, considered a displaced spouse. So if there's oh. a divorce and one person keeps house, the other one doesn't. Well, the other one is a first-time home buyer all over again. Like How about that. a temporary separation? Uh, <laughs> That's a displacement in my terms. I'm always <laughs> thinking. I like that. I think they'd have to have the the divorce or the. I'll the, be displaced the, next week. That'll yeah. be cool. <laughs> <laughs> but. Oh. but we don't have to only worry about the first-time home buyers mm -hmm. because there's a, a an expansion on that that uh, President Obama put out where this this eight thousand dollar credit was supposed to end last November. Mm -hmm. Well, it's ending this April, so yep. we better hurry up and get a contract signed for a first-time home buyer. You know what they are. Yep. You know that's uh, right. Pat actually said earlier in the news. Yep. 42 days left. Oh, that's correct. He did. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm gonna put a countdown on the website. Mm -hmm. 42 days. Because we have one on Earth Hour, that everybody loves my Earth Hour baloney. Yeah. So there's a countdown how many hours and days are left. We should do that for the first time home buyer tax credit. Good sure, marketing go. tool, huh? Yep. Mm -hmm. But it's not only first time home buyers. It has really? been expanded, not only extended. Expanded meaning that there's also now a $6,500 tax credit that you can take advantage of uh -huh. if you've owned your home for five out of the last eight years and you plan on selling it and buying another one that's going to be your home, then indeed you can also get a $6,500 tax credit Not on that. Not your investment property, though, huh? Not investment property. It has Nuts. to be where you live. What if we call it a second home, our own personal getaway? And not really a uh, investment we're, property. We're teetering on, or teetering on that fraud again. Oh, <laughs> why do I keep going back to we that fraud? We don't want to do that. No. <laughs> property Source Radio, it starts here. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Since we've you know disqualified Pat and I from being able to take advantage of this, unless if we want to spend some time in the clink, um, let's talk about who does qualify for some of these things. Particularly, I'm very interested in um, Ibero American. Uh, development Corporation. You were telling me a little bit about um, that organization and, and how you're you're developing neighborhoods and homes for people, correct? That absolutely is. This is really where my heart lies. Okay. Um, Let's talk about it. And in the sense that it is developing neighborhoods. Uh, what we do is we go out and we identify a vacant property. Uh, and I almost specifically emphasize the word vacant because we will not displace anybody in, in our efforts of putting somebody into a home. We certainly don't want to displace anyone else. Sure. So we're looking at vacant properties, generally foreclosed properties that are owned for the most part by the federal government. It will identify it as a rundown property in a $60,000 neighborhood that we may end up buying for whatever number, $20,000. Mm -hmm. We then actually gut the property totally 
and we will end up putting in everything new. And when I say everything, go ahead and ask me what. Everything except potentially the exterior walls, although we'll probably put siding on the exterior walls. Mm -hmm. But the new roof, new windows, new kitchens, new bathrooms, new floors, new furnace, new electric, new plumbing, everything new. Nice. Sounds like it might be a little energy efficient, too. Yeah. Yeah. Very energy efficient. Of course, there is like a, a push on for the green products. Mm -hmm. uh, the That's... That, that's great. I think it's great to do the uh, energy efficiency as well. I mean, well, it's just all wrapped into one. If you're creating a home, an affordable home for someone to live in as well, I mean, you think of the money that you're not only are you saving the environment, but you're saving your hard-earned cash if it's not going yeah. out heating the outdoors and your propane heater. Two of them. <laughs> Two of them yeah. Back to that. Okay. So go ahead. <laughs> the, Sorry. The, yes. The, these houses don't take aerosol cans either. <laughs> <laughs> no hummers in the driveway. But the uh, the point really is, again, this is a program house, hmm. and we put all this money into making it like new. So of course, it costs the ninety thousand dollars in a sixty thousand dollar neighborhood. Back to that idea, where the federal government will then give you a thirty thousand dollar down payment. Okay. Now, it's a program. There are qualifications for it. If you're a millionaire, the government doesn't want to help you buy a house. Really. So there are maximum incomes. Oh, boy. You're out, Pat. Oh, jeez, I'm out of everything. I, don't, I just want a freebie once in a while. <laughs> you know? Yeah, keep hit, hit, hitting up the waitress at the yeah, at the I, restaurant. I don't think they're going to give me freebies after what we talked about this morning. Do you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah, Pat. sorry. Well, no, that's fine. So the, the, qualifi the qualifications is as a term that these houses are for low to moderate income people. Now, a single person earning $37,250. That's considered low to moderate. Okay. So that person can qualify for these programs, whether it's a down payment grant, whether it's just a closing cost grant of three, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. Diff lots of different types of grants out there, all with their own qualifications. Just to clarify that, is that the maximum cap, the 37500 did you say? That's for a single person. Single, okay. For the majority of the programs. There okay, There are gotcha. a few out there that actually go up now. That would average income is one thing. Yep. This happens to be eighty percent of average. Okay. So generally speaking, these programs are aimed at people that are eighty percent or below of average. Okay. There are some grants out there, and feel free to ask me, that you can actually be up to one hundred and fifteen percent of average. So it's not only low to moderate; it's also above average income. So we're helping people all around. Again, we're here to stabilize the city, stabilize neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. and give you good, clean, affordable, safe living. That's Ibero yeah. American Development Corp. And that website is iadconline.org, folks, if you want to get a hold of uh, Ted Wood. Um, also, Ted, why don't you give people your number if they want to call you about city living? Sure. Feel free to call 585-370-6901. We thank you so much for joining us today. I think we're going to have to have you back on because there's a lot of stuff. We barely broke the ice on I'd this show. To. There's lots of stuff. Join us next week for Living Greener with our guests from Cool Rochester. Get the official coffee of Property Source Radio at Dark Horse Coffee, Dewey Ave across from Aquinas. They're open Monday through Saturday and today until 2 p.m. Thanks for spending time with us today. We sure hope you learned something new. We are online. We are in print. We are on air. We are at the malls. Property Source Radio, it starts here. I'm Brenna Hartman. Thanks for joining us today. Tune in every Saturday at 9 a.m. PropertySourceRadio.com. And stay tuned for the Blue Line Hockey Show up next. Yeah.